But having said all that, bottom line also is. Is that we've got several million people who are going to have health care that works. And it's not that I don't engage in a lot of self-reflection here. I promise you, I probably beat myself up even worse than you or Ed Henry does on any given day. But I've also got to wake up in the morning and make sure that I do better the next day. And that we keep moving forward. And when I look at the landscape for next year, what I say to myself is, we're poised to do really good things. The economy is stronger than it has been in a very long time. Our next challenge then is to make sure that everybody benefits from that, not just a few folks. And there are still too many people who haven't seen a raise and are still feeling financially. Insecure. We can get immigration reform done. We've got a concept that has bipartisan support. Let's see if we can break through the politics on this. I think that, hopefully, folks have learned their lesson in terms of brinksmanship. Coming out of the government shutdown. There have been times where I thought about, were there other ways that I could have prevented those three? Four weeks that hampered the economy and hurt. Individual families who were not getting a paycheck during that time absolutely. But I also think that, in some ways, given the pattern that we had been going through with House Republicans for a while, We might have needed just a little bit of a bracing. Sort of recognition that this is not what the American people think is acceptable.
They want us to try to solve problems and be practical, even if we can't get everything done. So the end of the year is always a good time to reflect and see what can you do better next year. That's how I intend to approach it. I'm sure that I will. Have even better ideas after a couple days of sleep and sun. Brianna Q, thank you, MR. President. On the debt ceiling, your Treasury Secretary has estimated that the U.S. Government will lose its ability to pay its bills come late February or early March. House Budget Committee Chairman Paul Ryan has said that Republicans are going to decide what it is they can accomplish on this debt limit fight his words. Will you negotiate with House Republicans on the debt ceiling? President Obama, oh, Brianna, you know the answer to this question. No. We're not going to negotiate for Congress to pay bills that it has accrued. Here's the good news I want to emphasize the positive as we enter into this holiday season. I think Congressman Ryan and Senator Murray did a good job in trying. To narrow the differences and actually pass a budget that I can sign. It's not everything that I would like, obviously. It buys back part of these across the board cuts, the so called sequester, but not all of them. So we're still underfunding research, we're still underfunding education. We're still underfunding transportation and other initiatives that would create jobs right now. But it was an honest conversation.
they operated in good faith. And given how far apart the parties have been on fiscal issues. They should take pride in what they did. And I actually called them after they struck the deal and I said congratulations. And I hope that creates a good pattern for next year, where we work on at least the things we agree to. Even if we agree to disagree on some of the other big ticket items. I think immigration potentially falls in that category. Where let's here's an area where we've got bipartisan agreement. There are a few differences here and there, but the truth of the matter is. Is that the Senate bill has the main components of comprehensive immigration reform that would boost our economy. Give us an opportunity to attract more investment and high-skilled workers who are doing great. Things in places like Silicon Valley and around the country. So let's go ahead and get that done. Now, I can't imagine that having seen this possible daylight breaking when it comes to cooperation. In Congress that folks are thinking actually about plunging us back into the kinds of brinksmanship and governance by crisis that has done us so much harm over the last couple of years. To repeat, the debt ceiling is raised simply to pay bills that we have already accrued. It is not something that is a negotiating tool. It's not leverage. It's the responsibility. Of Congress. It's part of doing their job. I expect them to do their job. Although. I'm happy to talk to them about any of the issues that they actually want to get done. So if Congressman Ryan is interested in tax reform,
let's go. I've got some proposals on it. If he's interested in any issue out there. I'm willing to have a constructive conversation of the sort that we just had in resolving the budget issues. But I've got to assume folks aren't crazy enough to start that thing all over again. Q, if I may just quickly, on a more personal note, what is your New Year's resolution? President Obama, my New Year's resolution is to be nicer to the White House press corps. You know? Absolutely. Q, all right. President Obama, Major Garrett. Q, that's quite a lead in, MR. President, thank you. Rick Leggett who is the head of the NSA task force on Edward Snowden. Told 60 Minutes that it was, worth having a conversation about granting Edward Snowden amnesty. To what degree, sir, were you pleased that he floated this trial balloon? And under what circumstances would you consider either a plea agreement or amnesty for Edward Snowden? And what do you say to Americans, sir, who after possibly being alerted to Judge Leon's decision earlier this week? Reading the panel recommendations, do you believe Edward Snowden set in motion something that is proper and just in this country about the scope of surveillance and should not be considered by this government a criminal? President Obama, I've got to be careful here, Major, because Mr. Snowden is under indictment, he's been charged with crimes. And that's the province of the Attorney General and, ultimately, a judge and a jury.
so I can't weigh in specifically on this case at this point. I'll make I'll try to see if I can get at the spirit of the question. Even if I can't talk about the specifics. I've said before and I believe that this is an important conversation that we needed. To have. I've also said before that the way in which these disclosures happened have. been damaging to the United States and damaging to our intelligence capabilities. And I think that there was a way for us to have this conversation without that damage. I'll give you just one specific example. The fact of the matter is that the United States, for all our warts, is a country that abides by rule of law. that cares deeply about privacy, that cares about civil liberties, that cares about our constitution. And as a consequence of these disclosures, we've got countries who actually do the things that MR. Snowden says he's worried about very explicitly engaging in surveillance of their own citizens. Targeting political dissidents, targeting and suppressing the press who somehow are able to sit on the sidelines and Act as if it's the United States that has problems when it comes to surveillance and intelligence operations. And that's a pretty distorted view of what's going on out there. So I think that as important and as necessary as this debate has been. It is also important to keep in mind that this has done unnecessary damage to you. S intelligence capabilities and U.S. diplomacy. But I will leave it up to the courts. And the Attorney General to weigh in publicly on the specifics of Mr. Snowden's case. Thank you.
sir, if I could follow up, Mr. Leggett is setting this in motion, at least raising this as a topic of conversation. You, sir, would I'm certain be consulted if there was ever going to. Be a conversation about amnesty or a plea bargain with Edward Snowden. President Obama, I think that's true, Major, and I guess what I'm saying is there's a Q, would you rule it out forever that you would never consider it? President Obama, what I'm saying is, is that there's a difference between Mr. Leggett saying something and President Obama of the United States saying something. Q, that's why I'm trying to get at you. President Obama, that's exactly right. Chuck Todd. Q, thank you, Mr. President, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. You talk about the issues with healthcare and the website rollout. But there have been other issues the misinformation about people keeping their policies, the extended deadlines, some postponements. We have a new waiver that HHS announced last night. How do you expect Americans to have confidence and certainty in this law if you keep changing it? This one here, this new waiver last night, you could argue you might as well have just delayed the mandate. President Obama, well, no, that's not true, because what we're talking about is a very specific population that received cancellation notices from insurance companies. The majority of them are either keeping their old plan because the grandfather clause has been extended further.
or they're finding a better deal in the marketplace with better insurance for cheaper costs.